Uh, but congratulations also to each and every one of you and the Africa Center for the Strategic Studies uh, and for holding this uh, seminar. Uh, I know the government shutdown and the temporary furlough of civilians made planning more challenging, and that last week there was uncertainty about whether the seminar would take place. But Mike, thanks to your leadership and the great efforts of the Africa Center staff, the team managed to bring together this great group of participants and a strong, strong program. I appreciate the opportunity to speak to you today as part of this program. I am sure that this group will have lots of great questions and we'll have a good discussion when we get to the question and answer part of the session. I want to leave plenty of time for that and we'll look forward to your questions and our discussion at the end. Now I'll organize my talk around three topics. First, the strategic environment in Africa writ large. Second, AFRICOM's strategy for addressing the security opportunities and security challenges. And third, how we can work with partners to better address opportunities and challenges in the region in the future. Africa, of course, is a region of increasing strategic importance to the United States. And I ask myself, why is Africa so important? Well, for starters, it houses seven of the world's 10 fastest growing economies. It is also the fastest growing region in the world in terms of population growth. Africa is rich in natural resources and just as importantly, rich in the human capital represented by a large young population, although this also presents significant development challenges. Africa has often attracted the international community's interest and attention because of violent conflicts, instability, both within and across national borders. Humanitarian crises, usually linked to conflict and weak governance, have also drawn attention. While many of the region's deadliest conflicts have been largely resolved in recent years, insecurity remains a significant challenge. Eight of the 15 peacekeeping missions the United Nations is operating around the world are in Africa. At the same time, African countries and regional organizations are increasingly leading and supporting multinational peacekeeping efforts. African economic growth has resulted in a growing middle class, and this expanding middle class has greater expectations of accountable government. In some places, this has led to increased democratic performance. It has also driven movements toward democracy that can be destabilizing in the near term as demonstrated by the events of the Arab Spring. Technology is increasing the flow of ideas and resources. Technology, including mobile phones, is making information more available and changing the ways in which economic transactions are con con conducted. African countries are increasingly integrated with other African countries and with the rest of the world on political, economic, and security issues. Now, how African governments and the people address the major demographic, economic, political, and security changes underway will impact the future security and prosperity of Africans, Americans, and the international community. In short, Africa is a continent of tremendous opportunity, but also one of great uncertainty. In just the last two years, we've seen major political developments in Africa. The establishment of a permanent federal government in Somalia for the first time in two decades. The birth of a new nation, South Sudan. Revolutions in Tunisia and Libya. And a coup followed by the restoration of democratic governance in Mali. Now these events created turmoil and uncertainty and continue to have significant impacts on regional security. Against these political developments, the roles of international actors in Africa are also shifting. China and India are increasing their political and economic activities in the region. Turkey is increasingly engaged in major political, economic, and security matters. Now, while the U.S. and European interest in Africa remain strong, today we also see Turkey engaged in Somalia and Libya, and China supporting United Nations peacekeeping missions in the region Japan is also operating its first overseas base since World War II in Djibouti. In addition to state actors, the influence of non-state actors is rapidly changing. 
Most notable is the recent rapid growth and increased connectivity of the violent extremist organizations in North and West Africa. Al Qaeda and its affiliates and adherents in Africa have evolved into an interconnected, syndicated, and diffused network that threatens African, U.S., and other international efforts. Al Qaeda and its affiliates and adherents and other violent extremist organizations in Africa are connected by the flow of ideology, money, weapons, fighters, and terrorist tactics, techniques, and procedures. The Northwest Africa problem set really stretches beyond the Sahel and Maghreb with linkages to Egypt, Syria, and all the way to Pakistan. The links between violent extremist organizations and criminal networks in Africa are also growing. Now I'll talk about how Af AFRICOM is working with partners to address these issues. First, I'd like to talk about two documents that broadly guide what we do. A key document is the 2012 U.S. Defense Strategic Guidance. This document is best known for publicly announcing the Department of Defense's rebalance toward the Pacific. But the guidance has major implications for Africa as well. It directs us to utilize a very low-cost, small footprint, and innovative approaches to advancing U.S. defense interests in Africa. And that's exactly what we're doing with our partners. And I'll talk about this more when I address AFRICOM's regional priorities. The second document I would call your attention to is the Presidential Policy Directive on Sub-Saharan Africa. The document explains U.S. interests in the 49 countries of Sub-Saharan Africa and outlines four major policy pillars. First, to strengthen democratic institutions. Second, to spur economic growth, trade, and investment. Third, to advance peace and security. And fourth, to strengthen opportunity and development. Now, AFRICOM's efforts primarily support, of course, the peace and security pillar, which is inter interdependent with the other pillars. I should also mention that U.S. policy in North Africa is guided by another presidential policy directive that's focused on North Africa and the Middle East. Now, how do these documents translate to AFRICOM's mission and strategy? Our mission is to work with our interagency and international partners to build defense capabilities, respond to crises, and deter and defeat transnational threats in order to advance U.S. national interests and promote regional security, stability, and prosperity. Now, our strategy focuses on the execution of six key tasks, countering violent extremist organizations and the networks that support them, supporting defense institution building, an effort led by the State Department that is an in increasing area of activity for AFRICOM, strengthening maritime security, supporting peace operations, supporting humanitarian and disaster response, and countering illicit flows of drugs, weapons, money, and people. Now, these activities help counter transnational threats, enhance cooperation between the United States and our partners on regional security issues. They also help strengthen the abilities of African nations and regional organizations to provide for their own security. AFRICOM works closely with other U.S. government agencies in all that we do. We are also increasing our combined efforts with African partners and traditional allies in strategic planning and the execution of training, exercises, and operations. This increased collaboration has helped to strengthen our relationships and interoperability with both traditional and emerging partners. I'd like to spend some time now talking about AFRICOM's top priorities. Our first priority is supporting regional partners in countering violent extremist organizations and enhancing stability in East Africa. Somalia is a key challenge and requires a comprehensive multinational approach to improve security and help Somalis make progress in governance and development. Al-Shabaab's operational capabilities, success in recruiting foreign fighters and broad reach via ties to extremist networks across Africa, the Middle East, North America, and Europe make it a significant threat to Somali stability and a serious threat to regional and U.S. interests. Somalia provides a good example of AFRICOM's strategy of developing the capacity of partners and working closely with civilian U.S. agencies. 
U.S. assistance in Somalia is focused on building the capacity and supporting the deployment of forces of the five nations participating in the African Union mission in Somalia or Amazon, as well as Ethiopia. The U.S. State Department has provided pre-deployment peacekeeping training and equipment to Amazon troop contributing countries, augmented by our military trainers and mentors. Amazon and Somali forces will need continued support from the international community to build on previous successes and make additional gains against al-Shabaab. Developing the Somali National Army as part of a more comprehensive approach to security sector reform and broader institutional development will also be key. Somalia has much more progress to make in governance and development, and security will be key to the ability of the Somali government and people to achieve peace. A number of security governance and development initiatives are underway in Somalia, executed by ent entities including the United Nations, the European Union, the African Union, Ethiopia, the UK, Turkey, and of course, the United States. Coordinating strategies, aligning the resources to that strategy, and developing better measures of effectiveness will be important to ensuring the international community's resources are applied constructively and where they can best advance the strategic objectives. Supporting partners in countering violent extremist organizations and enhancing regional stability in Northwest Africa is another priority. Libya, which has made limited progress over the past two years in laying the foundations for governance and security, is one country of focus in the region. The United States and other partners have committed to developing the core of a Libyan general purpose force that will initially provide internal security to allow Libyan government institutions to function and eventually expand to broader defense functions. As we work with our Libyan partners to support the development of military capabilities, Libya will need to make progress in developing a security strategy and resolving key issues related to the reintegration of former militias into society. The general purpose force should serve as a foundation for more comprehensive Libyan security sector reform. Other elements of Libya's security sector will have to be developed in parallel with early development of the Libyan judicial system will be an important piece of this. Libyan instability is connected to security challenges across North and West Africa. Following the collapse of the Qaddafi regime in 2011 and the coup in Mali last year, a flow of weapons and fighters out of Libya contributed to the rapid expansion of al-Qaeda in the Islamic Maghreb, or AQIM, and other violent extremist organizations in northern Mali. Additionally, in Nigeria, Boko Haram has rapidly developed into an extremely lethal group that threatens the stability of much of northeastern Nigeria and has begun to reach beyond Nigeria's borders. A regionally networked threat requires a regionally networked solution, and we are working with our partners in the Sahel and Maghreb to build their capacity and provide enabling support to their efforts. We collaborate closely with the U.S. Department of State and the U.S. Agency for International Development to build regional counterterrorism capacities under the umbrella of the Trans-Sahara Counterterrorism Partnership, or the TSCTP. The partnership includes 10 northern and western African countries and the United States. It supports the development of partner counterterrorism capacities and fosters cooperation among participating nations to address the evolving threat of AQIM and other extremist groups. Neutralizing al-Qaeda and its affiliates and adherents also requires actively disrupting the spread of violent ideology and the flow of resources, fighters, and terrorist tactics and techniques and procedures within the network. Following the coup in Mali last year, African and French forces intervened to free territory held by the violent extremist organizations. Military operations in Mali helped to provide space for Mali's recent democratic elections, and AFRICOM worked with the State Department to support the preparation of nine African nations to deploy the African-led International Support Mission to Mali, or AFISMA, which has since transitioned to a UN stabilization mission. We also provided and continue to provide airlift, aerial refueling, and intelligence support to the French. 
U.S. security assistance to Mali remains paused, although other forms of engagement have restarted after the lifting of coup-related restrictions on U.S. foreign assistance. Our military reengagement with the Mali military will be influenced by the developments in Mali. A key element will be how the government chooses to deal with members of the armed forces who participated in the 2012 coup. Another key challenge influencing stability in West Africa is maritime security in the Gulf of Guinea. Coastal nations contend with a range of maritime security challenges, including trafficking in drugs, weapons, and people, piracy and armed robbery at sea, oil bunkering, and illegal, unreported, and unregulated fishing. Criminal organizations take advantage of ungoverned maritime space that could also be exploited by violent extremist organizations in the future. Maritime security is important to countering terrorism and illicit trafficking and is also a critical enabler of trade and economic development. Piracy and armed robbery at sea raise insurance rates and shipping costs, which are passed on to consumers in both coastal and inland nations in the form of higher prices for food and goods. Illegal, unreported, and unregulated fishing harms the sustainability of African fisheries, which play a vital role in African economic development and food security. Piracy and armed robbery at sea have significantly decreased in the Western Indian Ocean over the past few years. This reflects the combined Im impacts of industry best practices, especially the use of embarked security teams, and international naval escort and patrols in key trade corridors. Progress in the Western Indian Ocean may offer lessons for the efforts in the Gulf of Guinea. Most of our African partners need maritime forces with Coast Guard skills rather than blue water Navy capabilities. African partners are building capabilities and strengthening cooperative regional approaches to address maritime security with the support of the international community. Our African Partnership Station and the AFRICOM Maritime Law Enforcement Partnership programs are supporting these efforts. A third priority for AFRICOM is strengthening the security of U.S. personnel and facilities on the continent. We are working closely with host nations and the Department of State with an emphasis on preventing instead of responding to crises. A fourth priority is improving our dialogue with Nigeria on the range of mutual security concerns. This includes maritime security, strengthening regional cooperation, and countering violent extremism while respecting human rights. A fifth priority is supporting regional efforts to counter the Lord's Resistance Army, or LRA. Now, operations by an African Union Regional Task Force combined with activities many, many civilian agencies and non-governmental organizations have resulted in increased LRA defections, in capturing key leaders and decrease, decreasing attacks, thereby reducing the threat to the civilian populations that the LRA has demonstrated over the past years. At AFRICOM, we must continually ask whether we are focused on the right things with the right resources. With limited resources and strategic challenges that are becoming more complex, it is extremely important that we identify where we can best apply our resources to support our strategy. In the future, we will continue to work with a broader range of partners, make tough decisions about prioritization, and also we must be more adaptable and flexible. These are both opportunities and challenges and in my opinion, stronger coordination of strategies with multinational partners and other U.S. government agencies, better prioritization, and closer alignment of our resources to strategy would go a long way toward addressing current challenges and strengthen our ability to advance our common interests. At AFRICOM, we are expected and excited to take on these challenges and seize opportunities as we move forward together with our African partners. Thank you, and I look forward to your questions.